Good evening, class. My name is Pam Turner, and I'll be the moderator for this evening's class. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen by divine vision and understood by divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, 
a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Our scripture, um, or sorry, first we'll have a, um, before the scripture, we'll have a musical selection by Dr. Gary Williams. And our um, scripture reading will be 2 Peter, the second chapter. And that will be read by Dr. Carol Miller. Let's all bow our hearts and minds and thank Joshua for bringing us here to class again. We thank him for letting us know that he, that our creator is real. We ask that you help us to do and think the things that are pleasing unto Yahweh and help us to have the determination to keep coming. Thank you, Joshua. Let us all say hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I 
Beautiful. I want awesome. to. An, I wanted to announce that um, that was. I, I only announced Gary, so that was also Sheree Williams singing. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Okay, I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments. Miss Carol, scripture lesson is. I'm sorry, Second Timothy, the second chapter. Okay. Where are you, Tim? I don't have tabs in the holy name. There you are. Second, Second Timothy two. Yes. Okay, Second Timothy 2, from the Holy Name Bible. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahshua the Messiah. In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as good as soldier is a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. No man that weareth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and Yahweh, give the understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua the Messiah of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my evangel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Yahshua the Messiah with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. 
If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before Yahweh that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more unrighteousness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and uh, Philetus, I don't know how to pronounce those, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure, having this seal. Yahweh knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and suitable for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace, with them that call on Yahweh out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that are opposed, perhaps Yahweh will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And they may recover themselves out of the snare of the adversary who are taken captive by him at his will. And that was uh, 2 Timothy 2 out of the Holy Name Bible. Hallelujah. The first speaker this evening will be Dr. Lisa Zaisi. Okay. Can y'all hear me well? Yes. Okay, yep. great, thanks. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, it's funny, because I was just, um, Tonight I was looking at the yeah at the Moses chart and when you look at um, and thinking about okay I don't know is there any new people on the on the I didn't look at the list today who's on the call I don't I don't think there is um, let me know if there is somebody's newer so when you look at this chart as we all know um, this is a very key chart but with the top of the chart Elohim the archetype original pattern of the universe. So Elohim, Elohim is the pattern and, but we can't, you know, like the moderator says in, you know, that cloud right there, Yahweh is spirit and you can't, man could not perceive of him as the moderator states. And so Yahshua, Yahweh broke himself down and used the pattern of the tabernacle to demonstrate what he was about. So if you look at, um, so right there, it talks about all the attributes. We've got wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength, among many other, but those are the nine primary attributes. And as we know, you know, after coming to these lectures that you can't, you don't really think about it, but you can't really see those things. You can't see them with your eyes. You can see them demonstrated in somebody's actions. And um, even if you look in this chapter when he's reading, I mean, when we're reading in this chapter, you know, like in, in three, two and 23, but foolish and unlearned questions, you know, that's like the opposite of wisdom and knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when you look at that chart then, and, and Moses is on the top of the mount in the cloud, and he sa it says the panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. So Elohim, Yahweh showed himself to Moses in this vision. 
And then right under that vision, it says Proverbs 8. I think right eight right over to the right, Sherry, like under the under his legs. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 822. Let's get that, please. Carol, if you can. Because when you, when you think about it, it was a revelation. Um, well, everything was a revelation to Dr. Kinley from Yahweh so that he could bring it to us and then he would reveal it to us. So we're all trying to understand something that's invisible, which is Yahweh. As we say in Romans 1, 19 and 20, though, the physical things can reveal the spiritual things. And so that's what we use. So Proverbs, Proverbs 8, 22. Yeah, hold on. I got it. I oh, want to get okay. it and read along with you. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Yep. 822, please. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Okay. Let's hold on. Let's, um, let's pick it up at eight and eight, one, and then I'll read a couple of verses there and then we'll go down to 22. So if you look, if you just start at one and read like one and um go down go down like one through five read that first and then we'll jump down eight and one does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice she standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the past she crieth at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming in at the doors unto you O men i call and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. So, you know, O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. This is, this is what you're going to get from Yahshua. This is not possible. This is not spiritual to really understand these attributes in Yahweh in spirit is coming. It's a revelation from Yahshua. We can see things though physically about wisdom, um, and we'll and so we'll, um, here speak like um, keep going, Carol, please. Seven. Six. Yeah, go, yeah. Six. six. Yeah, six. Herefore, I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. So this is Yahshua talking here. I mean, this is Yahshua talking. Um, it's in it, which we actually, we've been going through it in many lectures that it's one, um, it's Yahweh but we can't understand them any more than I can picture what you're thinking. You have a thought. I can't, I don't know what your thought is until you say it and do it. I can't get a drink of water from the air. We can't do it. It's just not possible. We can't perceive of him. So he's going to break it down. So everything, when you, he, anything that's wisdom, even if it's physical, you're looking at Yahshua. That's an example of him. So keep going. It, he kind of brings it out later. Keep going. Yeah. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. That's, I mean, I'm telling you, if you don't have an understanding from Yahshua, and if you, you're, that's just, you're not going to get that. <laughs> There's not a lot of people that are going to say that instruction and knowledge is better than silver or gold because these the whole world is going after shiny objects they're going after the stuff they're going after more and more and more receive my instruction and not silver knowledge rather than choice gold keep going for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it's it. not to be compared for it. and when you see something then the when you see something about Yahshua, you're like, yes, you finally get it. And that's because he showed it to you and you realize it and you're grateful and you kind of hang your head because you know, you can, you wouldn't have got there without him bringing you there. So keep going. Wisdom dwell with prudence and 
find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So it's, it's, I guess what I just was, just, I was staring at this and I'm looking at it and that, like he changed into that, that tabernacle and those attributes are broken down in there. When you see wisdom, you are looking at Yahshua, you, that's him. And it's not, you can't perceive of it unless you have it demonstrated by something. So keep going, Carol. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. Oh, I already read that, didn't I? In the eagle way and the forward mouth do I hate. Yeah, that's the opposite. That Satan is all about arrogancy. He's above Yahweh. He puts himself, he's all that. He's, he stands him up on the mount in that scripture. It's like, choose what you want. It's, like, it's crazy to think that the Satan is talking to Yahshua and like, pick what you want. I'm like, excuse me? He made you and everything else. It's just crazy that arrogance to go in the face, but he doesn't know. He's never going to see spirit, never. And if you see it, be grateful because it's not common. It's more, it's rare, more rare than gold or the silver. It's, it's, and when you, when you get to the point where you can drop that want or that need to have more stuff and more whatever, whatever it is in our minds that we want more of to be, to be safe or to be, you know, to think you're going to have enough or, you know, that's how you're going to be okay. When that falls away, that's such a, that's, that's the burden that's, you, you, you're, you're, it's such a relief. And then you realize that he's got you, he's got you the whole time and you've been scrambling around and, <laughs> and he's got you the whole time helping you like a two-year-old getting you to where you need to go. And you're like fighting them and like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to beat you up. I don't like what you're doing or whatever kids say. And the parent just looks at him like, really get over there. You know what I mean? And this is what our creator is doing to help us get, because he knows we, we just don't know. And so read 14, please. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I can, or I am understanding, I have strength. He's going through the attributes, wisdom and understanding and strength. Those are, that's when you see, even when you see it physically, you, you know what I mean? You're looking, those attributes are Yahshua. You're going to see him physically and then spiritually, you're going to understand that that's, that's, that's how you understand him. Let's keep going down to 22. Keep going, keep going in 15. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. That's how the kings reign and then the, the people are in charge because they're using wisdom and understanding. And Yahweh gave it to them, but they don't know that, you know, many of them, they don't, you know, there's, there's different examples in the whole creation and in the scriptures about the righteous kings and then the ones that were taking it for themselves and not giving credit to where it was due. So keep going. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Mm -hmm. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. You're so, so that's, and he even puts it in you to seek him. Not everybody seeks him. Not everybody loves him. Keep going. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches <laughs> and righteousness. Durable. The riches and honor are with him. It's hard at first because we don't, you know, we don't know. And it, we don't know. And yet we're coming to understand. You come to these lectures and he's chipping away. He's, by listening to these lectures, there's changes being made. By you giving your attention, like we say, don't pay money, pay attention, pay attention. And he, that's how he's showing you. He's, he's showing you through these lectures himself. That's the durable riches. I'm telling you, anything can go, it can go in a minute. It can burn up in a fire. You can lose it in a flood. Those people lost their home, those rivers that were over, everything's gone. And it, you know, it's tough. It's tough. And I'm sorry that that happened to those people, but the point is the durable riches are something, are those, those attributes. Seek that. Wisdom is better than rubies. Um, keep going, Carol. My fruit is better than gold. Yeah, than fine gold. 
in my revenue than choice silver. All of it is better. You can't see that. I'm telling you, if you see it at all, be grateful. Thank him. Thank him, because that's not common. Um, keep going. I lean in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So now he's talking, of, who is he talking about here? Who's talking? That those that love me will inherit substance. The substance, it's different substance, and it's rare, and it's not given out, and I will fill their treasures. That's such a fullness that they were walking around with him. They gave up all their stuff. <laughs> the apostles, they had nothing. They just did, that was, they were, you know, showing that example, even just back there. So keep going. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. So that's where that's under that, that Elohim, that vision that El Moses is at the top of the mountain underneath that body. It says Proverbs 8 and 22. This is now talking about Yahshua. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Keep going. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, and there were no fount fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. And when he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he this, this. We're talking about all the attributes and they're talking about Yahshua. Any more than like, how can you separate your thought from your word and your deed, what you do? Like if you, if you tried to think about how I would separate, you know, the thought that, um, you know, I'm gonna, I don't know, paint a room. You know, I, you know, I'm thinking about it. Nobody can know it, but then I, I say it. I tell somebody or I go to the store or somebody's going to help me. I'm talking about it. And then I paint the room. How would you say, how would you separate the thought from the actual deed and the word that you said? It's, and the reason I'm saying it that way is because sometimes, you know, I think, you know, we've, at least for myself, I was trying, when I come into class, I'm trying to understand the Godhead. We got Yahweh, then we got Yahweh Elohim, then we have Yahshua. And it was, and that you're trying to understand it and it's a unity. And you don't, you know, and just the fact that, you know, when you're looking at like Sherry's pointing down at the, 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 the cross there with so-called Jesus on the cross before we understand it was Yahshua. That you know, it had to, we you had to somehow break it down. That that is also that the cloud. That's 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 he's the same guy. Like in my song, the song American Pie, the three men I admire most: the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, they caught the last train for the coast. No, it's the same guy, and that's all I can do to not yell it out when I'm singing to the audience. <laughs> I'm just saying, so it, it, any more than we can separate our thought from the word that we say and the, and the deed that we do or the thing that we make, that's how you can't separate, you know, and, and I'm not saying everybody separated. It was just, you know, when you're trying to understand it, it's like, well, Yahweh's over here and Yellow Elohim's over there and Yahshua's over here. It's all the same. It's him. When you see that wisdom, you're looking at Yahshua and that's why he put himself into those attributes. And so He's trying to get our pea brains to understand him. And I just was thinking about that. So anyway, and I thought of it because I was thinking about it. And then when we got the scripture, the scripture is in Timothy too. And he's talking about all the foolish and unlearned, you know, um, in, in 23. Um, you know, that's the opposite. It's no, no knowledge. You're foolish. I'm not cutting anybody down. I'm just saying unlearned you don't have any knowledge you don't have any intelligence not your fault you're coming onto it and he's showing you so um 
I think that's all I want to say with that um, and leave somebody else a chance to say something. Um, and just encourage people to seek, like it said in, um, what was the scripture in Proverbs 8? I think he said it later on to seek him. And um, my fruit, um, I fear it, um, there's nothing, um, will be simple. I thought we read it in there, wasn't it? Those that love it and I will fill their treasures in me in the beginning of the setup. Um, okay, 17. Just wrap, wrap up with that, Carol, please. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 8 and 17. Proverbs 8 and 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. So in your mind, just seek him. Look towards him whenever you can. And it's funny, even when you don't think you have the time to do it, because you got to go over there and do whatever that other thing is, and you've got to do stuff. I know you have to do stuff. But when you got a minute, when you don't have to do stuff and you have a minute and you can seemingly choose what you want to think about, you know, you can scroll through whatever app you can, you know, duty, do whatever, just take a minute and think about him, put your thought towards him. And I'm telling you, you'll get repaid by it. You will get some substance, some real, some real substance that in 21, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. It's way better than anything else that you could gain. Um, so that's all I got right now. And I'll just yield the floor. Thank you. And I'll read too. I'm, I'm going to read for Sherry tonight, Carol, with you. Okay. Hello, who are you think, Lisa? The next speaker will be Dr. Sherry Williams. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that was kind of unexpected, Cynthia. <laughs> but as always, it is good to be here. And I have missed class, you know, having to work and things. And um, But Yahweh, you know, I was saying earlier, he has really blessed me. And I'm going with it, you know. And um, um, it, it's, it's better when you, when you just go along with where what Yahweh has in store for you, you know, and never would I have imagined any of this, actually, anything that's happened in my life since I've come into a, 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 an understanding or a knowledge of this teaching, you know. I'm, I mean, Yahweh has just opened so much, um, you know, and, and I'm sure that we all have similar testimonies in that respect. You know, not that it's easy. I'm not saying that some people may still find the struggle or find it hard for different things, you know, and Yahweh does put trials in our past, you know, so we can call on him and remember him because look what the children of Israel did over and over, you know, when things were going okay, they'd forget Yahweh, you know, and then things he'd put them into something and then here they go calling on Yahweh, you know, and they were disobedient always always, right from the get-go, right? We know right here when they were, when Yahweh brought them out with that mighty hand up out of Egypt and they come into the wilderness of Sinai, it didn't take them very long. Didn't take them very long at all to corrupt themselves and to, um, to, to um, ignore Yahweh, you know, or forget about him and what he had done for them down here in Egypt. So let's go to uh, the scripture reading. I, I, um, I enjoyed the previous speaker and, uh, you know, the things that have been on my mind too is, you know, with Yahweh there, how and what it is he is trying to get us to understand, you know, and Yahweh has brought us through all of this, you know, to perfect our understanding of him as he really is. Remember the first aim to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And I remember at one point in the class I was in that they, people had said, and I don't wanna, I'm not saying someone had said that, you know, that was for people coming in to class, 
you know, for us to help them find or them find and know Yahweh. But no, that's still for us to help us find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Because Yahweh is, and the scripture says it, you know, the breadth and length, we 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 can't even comprehend the magnitude of this of Yahweh in that respect. And that's why he had to come in and break himself down the way he did. Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah. That's why he had to do that. We couldn't do this. We couldn't understand him in pure spirit. But knowing that, and, and what comes to mind, and let's get Isaiah 55. And I know I'm, I, I went back to 2 Timothy, the scripture reading, but let's get Isaiah I think it's, um, I think I want 55. There's so much in Isaiah though. Um, okay, yeah, I, I think it's, um, let me see. No, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's not what I want. I want um, 40. Um, Lisa's rebooting her router. She just texted me. She, oh, had some, okay. she had some thunder and lightning. Oh. It's Isaiah. Um, I am Yahweh and there is none else. Um, oh, there's so much in Isaiah. I want to get. Um, all right. It's 45 and 5, try back. I want, oh man, there's so much. Uh, I thought it was 45 too, Sheree. Thank you. Um, yes, we can get that. There's so much in Isaiah though. I want to get Isaiah, if you guys could write this down, maybe Isaiah 45 and 5, Isaiah 42 um, and 8, Isaiah... 43 and 11 and we'll go there and um and i know i still have uh the scripture okay uh also i have 45 and five i am yahweh and there's none else there is no elohim elohim beside me i girded thee though thou hast not known me you see he took care of us even when we didn't know him we were ignorant of him until, you know, coming into this class and, and Yahweh giving Dr. Kinley that vision and revelation, we wouldn't have known a thing about him. And, you know, it's still, I stand in awe still of that, that I could know my creator as he really is and actually exist and, and I'm still learning so much, so much about him, you know, and how, again, our first aim, Dr. Kinley went over, I'm understanding those aims you know, and to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim as he really is. And that's for us. That's, we're not pointing the finger at the new person coming in or somebody else to help them find. We're still finding and knowing Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And I can pretty much say of a surety, because I tell it to my students all the time, I learn something new daily daily so we can't put that on somebody else we have to think this is for these aims we're given to the institute to help us find or you find Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and to actually exist so I'll go on 42 and 8 I am Yahweh that is my name and my honor will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images okay can you go back to um I'm sorry 45 and 5 I wanted you to read down a little bit I am Yahweh and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee though thou hast known, not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh and there is none else. There is none else. There's none else. There's no other El. And it's Yahweh and Yahweh doing, having a purpose. And you know, we... We tend to sometimes think that, oh, purposes or, or Yahweh's purpose changed. Yahweh's purpose didn't change. Our understanding of Yahweh's purpose is what changes. Yahweh set a purpose in motion, and it's going according as he deemed it to go. It didn't change. It didn't, you know, and, and, and even when, when we look at Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah 31, 31, 
he's going to, um, um, it's a new covenant now. It's not like the old, but there's that, that's, and it was, but, <laughs> and the thing about it, we've come to learn, it was always meant to be that way though, the new covenant. Always, that's what Yahweh purpose was the new covenant, but he had to take us through. And it's so interesting and a little side note, it's so comical in my class. <clears throat> I have this one little girl. She's so adorable. I'm teaching kindergarten now. And, and she reminds me almost, uh, Yahweh, I tell you, he puts things in our past and stuff. She goes all around the bush. And then I have to summarize. And I said, she said all of that to say this. <laughs> She's five years old. And she does it. She knows all of, uh, you know, I ask her uh, to tell me what this means. And, and she can't just come out with blah, 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 blah. And don't we do that in class too? I mean, there's no short answer. <laughs> Somebody asks you a question, we very seldom find a short answer for that question. <clears throat> so she goes all around the bush and this is what she meant, you know? And, and Yahweh has taken us on this journey through his purpose. And this is what it means. So go on a little bit more, Carol, in 45. Seven, I form the light and create darkness. So you hear that? He forms the light. I form the light and I create darkness. Go on. I make peace and create evil. Mm -hmm. I, Yahweh, do all these things. I, he does it all. He does it all. Everything. And what do we say? You know, all the time, you know, um, Yahweh didn't leave it up to somebody else to do any of his work, any of his work. He put his spirit in the workmen to make sure they constructed things to, to, to his specifications. You know, he put his spirit in the uh, prophets, in the, you know, to, 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 to write these words and to, to um, you show forth his purpose. You know, he put his spirit in and out of mankind back before Pentecost, you know, to carry forth his purpose and his purpose only. Um, okay, you can go to... I think, is that it there? Yeah. Yes. And okay, the other uh, Isaiah. In 42, it was, <clears throat> 42, 8, I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my honor will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Read that again, Carol, please. I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my honor will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, you know, we know one of the um, commandments is I am Yahweh and I'm a jealous El, you know, and he's not going to give his praise or his name or his glory to another. There's, there's no, there's nothing else. It's Yahweh. And that's who, you know, and, and he's taken us a, a way to, to, to get to know him though. He has taken, there is a process. There are steps that he has taken us through to get to know him. Let's, before I jump into that, let's go to um, the next one. And I think, is that it in Isaiah 42 that I might want? Uh, I think so. He, can, he talks about the former things coming to pass and new things. Mm -hmm. Go declare. on, read that part. Okay. Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. You hear that? Before they spring forth. And that's why he sent Dr. Kinley at the end of this age that told us a lot of these things that were going to come to pass. And they did they not happen? They came to pass or are still coming to pass. You know? So he's going to tell us. We just have to listen. That is the hardest thing for people to do. Constantly, I'm telling my kids, Listen, Yahweh said it over and over to hear Israel, hear, O Israel, hear, H-E-A-R, hear, over and over and over, because they don't hear, they didn't hear, and you know, you, 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 you think about it sometimes, if you really get yourself into a quiet spot or something, and you think about what somebody said to you, and do they come back and say sometimes, this is what I meant, because you didn't get it, you know, you yeah. didn't get it, or you said something to someone. And you know they didn't get it. So you come back and you say, well, this is what I meant. So you have to explain it another way, you know, because they didn't get it. <clears throat> so here, that is one of the hardest things. Listen, listen, you know, to, to, to be able to listen and hear. And that's what Yahweh wants from us, to listen and to hear. Hear, O, o, o Israel. 
go on a little bit. Um, no, that's good there. Um, so yeah. now Isaiah 40, was it 43? Did you read yeah, that in 11? I, I think it's it up at 10. All right. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no L formed, neither shall there be after me. Mm -hmm. I, even you hear I, that? You say yeah. that, read that again, Carol. Read okay. that again. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no L formed, neither shall there be after me. Mm -hmm. I, even I, am Yahweh. And beside me, there is no savior. Beside him, there is no savior. There's no savior. It's Yahweh doing the south, the saving. It's Yahweh. And that's what the reality is. That's what he's getting us to come to, to understand. Mm -hmm. It's one and the same. Lisa was talking about that. These mm -hmm. three are one. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. These three are one. First John 5 and 7 in King James Bible. And let's get um, go to the scripture reading, please. Uh, I'm back. Carol, do you want me okay. to read something? Go, yeah, you can get the scripture. Or did okay. you want First John? Yes. Whichever. I don't have the King James. Do, do, do you want me to read First right. John? Or, or yeah, go ahead. And then you can, yeah. I'll read First John. First John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Mm -hmm. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Mm -hmm. And that's how Yahweh, to this very day, this, to this very day, this very hour, this very minute, is continuing to show us himself as he really is and actually exists through these witnesses. We are compassed, compassed. You know, that just boggles my mind too. You know, I don't want to say boggles is not the right word actually, but that just is um, amazing. Yes, and it's <laughs> so important. We are yeah. compassed about. Compassed means on every side. There is no way you're going to turn. And and what it um it's in the Psalms, I think. Whether shall ye go to flee from the presence of Yahweh? There's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You go to the bottom of the earth or what your pits or however I'm paraphrasing. He's there. You go to the heavens. Mm -hmm. He's there. Mm -hmm. You know, and look at mankind. What are they trying to do? What are they trying to do with all this? I mean, maybe some of it's good for knowledge and Yahweh's allowing it, but all this space exploration, you know, and stuff. And it's, it's, a, it's another, it's a horse of another color for me, but, um, you know, but it's, it's, I don't know if they're, you know, what they're trying to do, though, not just explore to me, you know but find something out there, you know? And where, what is it? What does the scripture say? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to find God out there. And what does he say though? He's not far from every one of us, but they're looking all out in space. Want to go all the way to Mars and all these places to find, and really to find God. And he's right here, right? And we, we know, we know and understand that he, he can be right within us. That's his purpose actually to be within us and bring us back to the father, Yahshua, through Yahshua, you know? So there's so much, and I know I'm, I'm choppy, but um, so there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the water and the blood and the spirit. And mm -hmm. these three agree in one. Mm -hmm. And again, to this very day, those things are occurring. To this very day, a child is still born, blood, water, and spirit, and the principle of 40, to this very day. And all those principles are going all down through the ages and dispensations. And let me see here. Okay, there we are. All down through the ages and dispensations and has, have not changed. These witnesses have not changed. I am Yahweh and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob won't be consumed.
because he doesn't change. Just imagine how it was when we were out there in the world. Well, is God going to do this? Is God going to do that? Has he done this? God needs help. I need to do this or I need to do that. And it's not like that. We come to understand and realize and be able to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exist. So let's go back to the scripture reading, 2 Timothy, the second chapter, I believe. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 2, start at 1? Yes, please. 2 Timothy 2, 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. The grace. What is grace? What is grace? An unmerited reward, right? Mm -hmm. Unmerited. We didn't earn it. We couldn't, mm -hmm. we couldn't, we couldn't earn it. We could never do it enough or anything to earn the grace of Yahweh through Yahshua. We couldn't do it. There's nothing we could do. And, you know, we, we come to realize, hopefully we come to realize and be grateful and appreciative of that. Go mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Two, and the things that thou has heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Mm -hmm. That's Thou what there. classes are all about, right? To teach others also. Mm -hmm. The truth, the truth though, that's what's said in our moderation. After the aims, our slogan is to, um, our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. And it's like I overheard a bit of the conversation before um, class started with um, Connor saying that, you know, people are now looking at him differently and funny. And, and that's, the, but you have the truth and you're going to have to stick to it. And, and it's going to be, it could be kind of tough when you're dealing, especially with your family members or people close to you, when you have the truth and they don't and they can't see it. They, they're not going to be able to see it. Yahweh didn't give it to them yet, yet. And it could be at a time appointed mm -hmm. that they could so mm -hmm. we don't give up right. you know um but but it's it's not meant for them but that's where your blessing comes in knowing that you do have the truth and can stand on it no matter what and you don't have to argue or fight you know i mean like it's <laughs> and that's really a two-edged sword because sometimes it is like we do have to fight <laughs> You know, because it talks about putting on the whole armor of Yahweh and being girded, you know, so it's really, you know, how do they say now, which I, I don't know that I fully agree with all this, but it's like pick your battles, you know, but, mm -hmm. but Yahweh, you know, what, what we have to do, though, is realize Yahweh always did the fighting, even for Israel, he did the fighting for them, because when, when, when Yahweh was on their side, they prevailed. And when he wasn't, they didn't, you know, but Yahweh always did, always did the fighting for them. They didn't do it. That's how when they go up, when they went out to spy out the land, and I know I'm jumping all around, when they went up to spy out the land of Canaan land, you know, and 10 come back with a false report or with a, a report talking about, no, we can't take the land. And, you know, in, in one respect, they were correct. They couldn't take the land because Yahweh said he was going to give it to them. So there was nothing for them to, to take. Yahweh had it all set up what they were going to do and how he was going to do it, give it to them. So no, it wasn't meant for them to go in and take the land. Yahweh gave it to them. But they didn't understand that, you know? And these are the things that now, because right, these are for our learning, for our admonition, these things. So Yahweh, it's not for us to go in necessarily and, and take something or fight for something necessarily. You know, with Yahweh in us, it's going to manifest. It's going to happen, you know. So go on. I'm sorry for getting off. Go um, back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. I'm and sorry, that, can you see the screen? That, well, we're looking at the dispensations chart. 
Yes, because I'm lost right now. I don't know where my stuff went, but go on. I'm hearing you, but I can't see the screen. Oh, you can't see the dispensations chart? No, not right now. I don't know what I did. I hit something, but go go on. <laughs> it's probably hard to speak and to do the charts. Okay, so we're at um, 2 Timothy 2 and uh, 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that labors must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and Yahweh give the understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua, the Messiah of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. Therefore, okay, I'm sorry, I got I got lost a little bit because I had to find my spot I'm back sorry, here, and I have it. I have yeah. it now, and I know okay. that I'm up on another chart, right? Elementary okay. chart. Now All Moses. Right. Now Moses. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, guys. I kind of got. I just moved a little bit while I was talking and it's all good all right okay where are you at Lisa well I didn't know if you want me to start over because you were kind of you know doing the charts you want me to pick it up again at three or two and three or because I kind of read down to to, to ten but you yes might not well, go on back yes I'm sorry yeah that's okay you were doing stuff that's all right it's a lot to do um, 2 Timothy 2 and 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahshua the Messiah. Uh -huh. No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, uh -huh. that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Uh -huh. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Uh -huh. Let me see. Uh, I might want to jump down. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Go on, keep reading down a little bit. Six, the husband man that labors must first must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and yes, Yahweh give the understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua, the Messiah of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Mm -hmm. That Yahshua, the Messiah, was raised from the dead. Okay, according to my gospel. And let's go to 1 Corinthians, if you can get and hold that, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Okay. Go on then, Elise, a little bit. Yeah. Keep reading there? Yes, and Timothy. Okay, um, nine, nine, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. See, the word of Yahweh, right? What is the word of Yahweh? Yahshua, mm -hmm. right? That's the word of Yahweh. That is not bound. There's no bounds there. He is, sets them, if I can say it that way, right? He sets the limits and the bounds. He's the source and he's the substance of all things. Mm -hmm. So if there are any bounds and there, there's not with Yahweh, but he sets that for us. They're bounds, bonds, bounds. <clears throat> Go on. 10, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, sakes, mm -hmm. that, they, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Yahshua the Messiah with eternal glory. Mm -hmm. And that's our hope and our, you know, our 10th aim, to inherit eternal life now. That's the purpose of, of this for us to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification. <clears throat> Go on. 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Mm -hmm. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, mm -hmm. he also will deny us. Yep. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Right. And that's what with the children of Israel going over there into Canaan's land, you know, and coming back with that report. But Yahweh, Yahshua was right there with him. 
and he couldn't deny it. So he set it up that there were three witnesses, I believe, there. Caleb, Eliab, Eliab um, and, oh, I forget now. I think there were three that came back. And, and Joshua might have been one of them. I can't recall. But, you know, that said, yeah, the land is such and such, and we can take it. We can with Yahshua, with Yahweh, because Yahweh was right there with them. Yash, you know, Yahshua was right there with them. <clears throat> so yeah, it was given to them. It was given to them. And and then and, and and it's like it's almost like they ignorantly though, you know, they refused it, you know? And there's a pamphlet, right? Calling um they ignorantly calling Yahshua a liar, you know, uh, saying he came into institute. It's you know, something instead of fulfilling. And nowhere in there does he say he came to start anything, Yahshua, you know, to start anything, Yahshua the Messiah, he came to fulfill. But let's get 1 Corinthians, that's good, Lisa, thank you. 1 Corinthians 15 and one, and these are the witnesses and this is how he gives it to us to understand him again as he really is and actually exists. Go on. 15, one, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein ye stand, mm -hmm. by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And how that, let me go there, First Corinthians, okay. So unless you believed in vain, we know, we go over this all the time, word vain means worthless, useless, make void or empty, you know? So unless you, you know, could sit here for a long time and, and not really believe or not fully understand Yahweh's purpose, you know? Um, and that's gotta be, you know, that's a witness for us. And it should be kind of a fearful thing, a fearful thing that that could be something, you know, that Yahweh has happening, that you know, somebody to sit here for a long, long time and still not have an understanding of Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And I pray all the time that that I have this straight, that I see this thing the way it is. And every time I, I don't want to say like I try to, I, I examine it, you know, and try to maybe, you know, they say like now this new thing was like out thinking outside the box. We don't really want to necessarily do that. Out, there's outside of Yahweh's box. We don't want to get outside of Yahweh's box, you know? So we just, we, but what he does, what we, what he does is causes us to understand him through these witnesses that he's given us in our lives daily, daily. There is something going on that is pointing to Yahweh and showing us, showing us, manifesting to us that Yahweh is real. And more real than anything in this earth plane that that this earth plane has to offer physically so and that is our hope in that you know again our 10th aim to inherit eternal life now now in the kingdom of Yahshua not later on not some other time but or not when we die and take off this flesh physically so but to inherit eternal life now and we can know because Yahweh raised Yahshua from the dead. He was raised from the dead. So we know through that testimony and through those witnesses that we could be spiritually raised and have been spiritually raised from the dead. And I know I can probably speak pretty collectively for a lot of us. We do not think and see things the same way we did prior to coming into class. And even after being here for years, our understanding grows and changes, you know? And, um, and, and Yahweh set it up that way. He set it up that way, but he is going to, at, at some point, wrap this all up you know, and, mm -hmm. and 
and bring it all to an, to a close in this age and dispensation, you know? And so that we will be where he is and we will be like him as Paul says, you know? We don't know what we shall be, but we know we shall be like him, you know? In that spiritual, heavenly glorified state. And that's, that's you know, I, I don't know how much we think about that, you know, because I know for myself, I'll speak, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, getting caught up in all the things that, and it was talked about, we have to do, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. And I like, you know, I, I, I like I said, I, I'm teaching a new grade, so I want to do a good job, but I, it's a big learning curve too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's taken a lot of my time, but you know, and, but I, I, I know, and I, I'm like, Yahweh, uh, you know, I'm not going to let this go on like much longer. And I don't care something that's got to give before, before this gives, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So like today it was like, I'm leaving and I'm not bringing anything home, nothing, nothing home, no work, nothing, you know, and I'm going to class and, um, and these are the things, this, this is the things that Yahweh puts us through and he shows us, you know, all to his glory, though. It's all yeah. to glorify him, to yeah. give him the praise, the honor. And I have to say, guys, I have to say that it, it's not, you know, we have these trials and things and I don't want to minimize them. I don't want to minimize them, you know, and um and, and I, I'm not, I'm not minimizing anybody's trial, but look to Yahshua and he may have you going through it for a while or what it may seem like a while, you know? And it's like, why Yahshua, why? But what does it do? Uh, Lisa was talking about these attributes, you know? And Yahweh is, he is. This is what he is, not what he possesses, what he is, wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge, love, beauty, and justice, foundation, power, and strength. So these things that he has us going to through are all going to benefit us with these attributes formed in us, with Yahweh formed in us. That's, that's what's going to go on in the ages to come. Right. And to be able to glorify him and give him the glory that he so deserves and has showed us. He showed us this, guys. He showed us that he is a just L, um, good L. I mean, he's, um, you know, sometimes it may seem like, and I think about the prayer Yahshua had, you know, my L, my L, but we know that he's fulfilling. Why has thou forsaken me? And sometimes, sometimes people may feel that way, may get to that point where they feel that way. And we know physically so in life, people have gotten that way because they commit suicide and things, you know? They've yeah. gotten to the point where they just have given up, you know, and they don't think anything can be done. But we know. We know if in this life only we were we we were of men, we'd be miserable. If we if this is all we had to look forward to, then yeah, we would be miserable. And that's what people see. This is all there is. What else is there? And they have all this money and they have all this fame and they have all this, but it's still not enough. It's not enough to satisfy the soul. And there won't be anything to satisfy the soul but Yahshua. There'll never be. And we know and understand that, hopefully. There's not going to be anything that's going to satisfy our soul but Yahshua, you know, and it's so funny, you know, how, how we have, and I don't want to say funny, but it's so interesting, you know, the coin, the, the, the um, play on words and things, you know, because let me get to up the, I don't know, let me see. Yes, you know, these plates, they, we learn from them, we eat from them, right? We sup from mm -hmm. these plates. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've gone through that 40 plate chart and how much, how much Yahweh has revealed to us every time, you know, every time you want to learn about your creator, he's going to open it up for you. He's going to open it up, whether it's right now, right now, or whether it's a little while down the road, it's okay. He's going to open it up. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you what you want in the respect 
if it's about him, if it's according to his purpose, he's going to give you that. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, and you don't have to, when is it coming? When is it coming? It'll come. It's going to come, right? Though the vision mm -hmm. tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will, won't tarry when it does come. And, 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 you know, it's like with Dr. Kinley. He got it all in one shebang. Boom, bang, boom, you know. And we're getting it little by little to be able to give Yahweh the honor to understand this stuff. To, to be able to understand it, you know. And Dr. Kinley said, you know, we're better off for it. But, you know, but Yahweh is just. He's real. He's... um. He wants us to know him as he really is and to actually exist. And that's what he's perfecting in us to go on in the ages to come. And he's given us, we are compassed, compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. And they carry forth to this very day, blood, water, spirit, 40, principle, all through the news. And I haven't even had a chance to listen to the news lately, like I usually do. But um, so... Um, blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, resurrection. We know that because Yahshua raised from the dead, we also can be raised from the dead. We know that because he showed us, he's given us the witnesses over and over and over again. Doesn't he beat us over the head with it? You know, if you don't get it here with Adam, you know, you may get it with Noah. If you don't get it there, you may get it with Abraham and Isaac, the children of Israel, the tabernacle. I mean, he's just compassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Jonah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Um, you know, we, we could never exhaust the list. We could never exhaust the list of witnesses. And, and, and even the scriptures talk about if everything that Yahshua did could be written, the world, the world couldn't contain it. The world, can you imagine? Think about that, seven billion or more, and they don't even know the number really. I mean, that's as close as they could come. But, and who knows what that number is now? That's been a few years ago, but on the face of the earth and the world couldn't contain everything Joshua did in what, 33 and a half years? 33 and a half years nowadays is considered a short lifespan, you know, even then, but, and the world couldn't contain in everything that he did and said, wow, it's just, it's just, and we have just a piece of that, just a little bit of it. And Yahweh's given it to us. He's given it to us, guys. He's given it to us, just given it to us, just to take, you know, if I can say it that way, just to just gave it to us to understand, you know, and if you ask him, you know, with an open heart and, you know, he's going to, he's, he's obligated, he's obligated to, to, to um, fulfill that, you know, to answer your, our questions and to, uh, to, to build our faith and to strengthen us because that's what he is. He is strength. So if we have him in us, that's what we'll, we'll be strengthened with that. And again, it may not be an easy battle. It's not an easy thing in this life, but that's why we have our, that hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. That's why that, and look at how he summed all that up. The 10th aim to inherit eternal life. We know zero is a placeholder. So the bottom line, just one. So to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification. He summed it all up in that final aim there. And that's our hope. And that's our mission, if I can say, or purpose, hopefully that Yahweh has put within us to want that, to want that eternal life now in him. And with that, I'll just say um, hallelujah and thank you for the time and all praise, honor, and glory go to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was great, Sherry. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Dr. Sheree Williams from the Orlando branch. Good evening, class. 
Good okay. evening. Okay. Good evening. Um, I enjoyed the testimony of the two previous speakers. And um, I want to start out uh, with John 17 and 3 because we want to always keep uh, in the forefront of our minds the reason why we come to class in the first place. You got John 17 and 3. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got it, Carol? I got it. And okay. this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Okay, thank you. So eternal life is to know Yahweh, our Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So, you know, when I was in the church, they taught me that uh, eternal life was to join the church, to be water baptized, to eat the Lord's supper and all that kind of thing. But here in John 17 and three, it's written in red. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, mm -hmm. which means that these are the words of the savior himself. And he said that eternal life is to know our heavenly father, Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, our savior. And that's the reason why we come down here to know Yahweh. That's our first aim. To know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Okay, so that, that's eternal life. Okay, so now uh, if you'll get for me, um, go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and get for me the 6th verse. And then after you read the 6th verse, drop down to the 11th verse. Because the previous speaker was talking about the migration of the children of Israel uh, briefly from Egypt to the wilderness into Canaan's land. She, she touched a little bit about uh, the migration of the children of Israel. So we want to know, well, why do we talk about them so much? What is the deal? Okay, okay you got it? Yep, we got 1 Corinthians 10 and 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Keep, keep going, just read down to 11. And then go to 11. Okay, 11. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Absolutely, and that's, that's where we are, as the previous speakers were talking about, we're at the end of this age. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when we go back here and we read uh, and we, we admonish our new people, read the book of Exodus, Just, you know, read that book. You're not going to understand everything. Just read it and mm -hmm. keep coming to class mm -hmm. and then read it and keep coming to class. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so then when the speakers go into those things, then it's like, oh, I remember reading that. I remember. Oh, yeah, that's what that meant. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so when we go into these things, it'll click, you know, but uh, you have to, okay, now get for me the scripture lesson. Let's go to 2 Timothy uh, 2 and what do I want here? Hold on. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, study to show, is that study? Yeah, mine's highlighted. <laughs> uh, study to show that self approved unto Elohim, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, very good. So, and, and then while I'm making a statement, if somebody can get the Elohim book, volume one, go to the introduction, uh, get page one, the bottom paragraph. And it's going to go along with this uh, scripture here in the scripture lesson. Okay, and okay. Um, so it's talking about study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, mm -hmm. um, a workman that shall not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And through this divine vision and revelation, the founder taught us that that is rightly dividing the ages and dispensations. So, um, so there is some studying that that we have to do. We got to go in and check these things out for ourselves, you know, and um, know for ourselves. 
because at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, every tub's got to stand uh, on its own bottom. I can't uh, 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 slide in on Gary's uh, coattail and he can't slide in on my skirt tail. You know, we all, all of us have to know for ourselves, you know, which is eternal life. You got the Elohim book is volume one, introduction, yep. page one, bottom paragraph. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um, it is quite apparent that you probably will note many statements herein which you shall feel are entirely out of harmony with the general theological conceptions, displaying the semblance of cold-blooded sacrilegious attitudes. Okay, hold it just a minute. So in other words, um, you know, like I was saying, my church said I had to, you know, to be saved, I had to be water baptized. But in this school, by this divine vision and revelation, we found out that Yahshua fulfilled water baptism. He did it for us. We don't have to do that, you know? So that's like, it, it would appear to be sacrilegious because we say, you don't have to be water baptized. You're baptized in the Holy Spirit now. And the church says, well, you got to eat the Lord's Supper. Well, Yahshua fulfilled the Lord's Supper, which is really the Passover memorial. He fulfilled mm -hmm. that and brought it to an end. So now we're eating spiritually and psychologically now. So since we say... You're not baptized physically, but you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're not eating uh, 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 the Lord's Supper no more physically, so, but you're eating, you know, uh, of Yahshua the Messiah spiritually, so by knowledge and understanding. You know what I'm saying? So he said it, 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 it may seem sacrilegious to, to a person, mm -hmm. you know, read on. Mm -hmm. This is not true. But this is just not true. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have the unadulterated truth straight from heaven, straight from Yahweh himself by this divine vision and revelation. Okay, read. Nevertheless, we must, for our own eternal welfare, regardless of our present so-called church affiliation, keep an open mind to proven facts Keep an open mind to proven facts. And that's what's so beautiful about this school. We're not told to believe something just because somebody says it. I mean, the founder said, I have divine vision and revelation. He said, make me prove it until you are satisfied. So now if, it, if it's not proven to your satisfaction, then you don't have to believe it. That's your divine spiritual right. Read on. Keep an open mind to proven facts which Satan, the adversary, who was created to oppose the truth, is always present to influence us in the wrong direction. Okay, so we're gonna uh, hold on to proven facts. And it says in the scriptures, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. So that's why uh, Yahshua, who is the teacher in this school, he, go he gets a witness in the law, he gets a witness in the prophets, and then you see how Yahshua fulfilled it. Then you see how he ushered it into a spiritual reality where we are today. So that's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. We're not asked to believe it just because somebody, you know, rolled it across their lips. You got to have proof and evidence. Okay, so I'll read, read that one sentence again, that last part. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, okay, nevertheless, we must for our own eternal welfare, regardless of our present so-called church affiliation, Keep an open mind to proven facts, which Satan, the adversary who was created to oppose the truth, is always present to influence us in the wrong direction. Yes. So we, we have to, to, to hold on to proven facts and don't let the devil, you know, uh, deceive us, to, you know, to try to make us within ourselves make little of it. If you got proof and you got evidence, you know, not just in the scriptures, but also in the creation, you can hold on to that. You see what I'm saying? And so the devil, but he's always present. And that's something to come to a real realization of, that the devil is always present to try to influence us in the wrong direction. You see, but that's why we keep looking on to Yahshua, you know, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And read on. Did it ever occur to you that we remain ignorant of attested truth and scientifically proven facts, most particularly because we fail to make a personal detailed investigation of important matters. This okay, hey, I'm sorry. So he says that 
we remain ignorant of attested truth and scientifically proven facts because we fail to make a personal detailed investigation. So you see how the scripture lesson says, study to show thyself approved. You understand what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and here it is the founder in, 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 uh, in agreement with that, uh, uh, I wanna say recommendation, but it might be a better word of that, uh, I'm going to say recommendation in the scripture. That's the Holy Spirit speaking through the apostle Paul by study to show thyself approved. You understand what I'm saying? Here he is. Say we remain ignorant mm -hmm. uh, of attested truth mm -hmm. and scientifically proven facts because we fail to make a personal detailed investigation of these things. And so we don't want to make that mistake. We, we want to check these things out and know for ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to fail to, to investigate these things for ourselves and prove mm -hmm. it to ourselves. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. This failure to investigate positively retards the progress of our understanding and knowledge in every vocation and phase of life, both physical and spiritual. Uh-oh. So this failure to uh to personally do a detailed investigation it absolutely mm -hmm. retards the progress of our knowledge and the root word of knowledge is no and mm -hmm. eternal life we just read john 17 and 3 is to know our heavenly father yahweh on him through yahshua the messiah so you see it, if we don't investigate it absolutely retards the progress of our knowledge and what else the progress of our understanding and knowledge in every vocation and phase of life, both physical and spiritual. It says in every vocation, in every vocation and phase of life, both physical and spiritual. So see, that's why, why by this divine vision and revelation, we teach Romans 1, 19 and 20. It takes the natural to understand the spiritual. You get what I'm saying? So this organization is the only organization that ties together spiritual things, spiritual knowledge and understanding, you understand, with science. It ties it together because Yahweh, our Elohim, he is the creator of the angelic, which means spiritual, and the physical creation. So if he created the invisible, and the physical things that we could see, which is science, if you will, then it has to uh, correlate one with the other. You get what I'm saying? Read on. Sometimes stopping and thinking for a moment over the essential things of life eliminates many regretted years of poverty, sickness, humiliation, embarrassment, sometimes death and destruction. Oh, my goodness. So he said, just stopping and thinking intelligently, we can avoid many regretted years of poverty, sickness. And, and what that takes me to, I just saw it on the news tonight, that this, this one family, uh, 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 it was the lady's husband, and she was standing there with the mother-in-law. She's pleading on, on Channel 9 this evening about some special thing. They got him on a ventilator, but he need this other thing they're using for COVID patients now. And all of them are being used and none of the hospitals have them available. Mm -hmm. But the point they want to make was, my husband made a mistake. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do what he needed to do to protect himself. So now he's, he's struggling to survive. You know what I'm saying? So just thinking intelligently, maybe he could have avoided that. And their message was on the news, hey, do what you can to protect yourself. Get vaccinated. Wear your mask. You know, keep your distance. You understand? So just stopping and thinking intelligently mm -hmm. on the essential things of life, both physical and spiritual. We can avoid many regret years of poverty. We don't have to be poor, of sickness. We don't have to be. Now, we, we're getting old. We got blood pressure issues and all that. And we know that, you know, we're just passing through. This life is not. Uh, permanent. It's temporary. We're here just to learn about Yahweh, our Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah. This creation is a schoolmaster to teach us. You understand? So yeah, we get old, we're going to have some, some issues, what have you. You understand what I mean? 
But uh, some of these things that people are going through right now could, could have been avoided. You understand? If they had just taken their medicine, I'm just using it like that. You know what I'm saying? So it says poverty, sickness, and what was after sickness? It was uh, poverty, sickness, humiliation. Uh-oh, you can avoid humiliation. What is that? Being embarrassed about something. Go ahead. Embarrassment. Mm. That's another one. And sometimes death and destruction. Sometimes death and destruction. We can avoid that by just thinking intelligently. Finish it. Therefore, we should learn to pause and try to think intelligently before we finally conclude affirmatively or negatively. We should do this before an ultimatum or final decision is rendered on any secular subject. On any secular subject, not just spiritual things, mm -hmm. but natural things too. All right. So I just want to have that read because that goes along with our scripture lesson, 2 mm -hmm. Timothy 2 and 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Study to show thyself approved. All right. So for a few minutes, what I want to do, uh, um, I want to go into the creation because the reason why I'm going this way, because when I was new in class, a young person being 18 years old or a senior in high school, the seeing the gospel in the creation, that is what held me all these many years. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not 18 no more. I, I'm 62 now. You understand what I'm saying? But when I first came to class, I was 18. I ain't know nothing about no Bible. And I ain't know nothing about no scriptures. But when they went into the creation and showed me what was written in the Bible is manifesting the creation, I was able to hold on to that. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, this is awesome. And mm -hmm. that's what I love so much about this teaching because mm -hmm. it ties together the spiritual things and the scientific things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're in they're in perfect agreement. I love that. Mm -hmm. So that's Romans 1, 19 and 20, that we take the natural things to understand the spiritual thing. Now, the previous speakers uh, were talking about the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And I think uh, one of them had it read that the gospel being written in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 through 4, it says that the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah again, the third day, according to the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. And we know we could go all through the Bible. As a matter of fact, she went down that elementary chart just a little bit and showed some of those principles. But let's go into the creation. This is what I love so much. Now, so the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, again, the third day, according to the scriptures. So we're going to go examine ourselves and see if we can see the gospel, you know, in our lives. You know, and this is something you can hold on to, even when uh, 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 um, you may not quite understand the scriptures or even your loved ones, coworkers or friends or whatever the case may be. You can't deny yourself. So if the gospel is the death, burial and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, then when we examine ourselves, what do we do every single night? We have to go to bed, right? Mm -hmm. And did you know if you don't sleep, you will die? That's mm -hmm. a proven fact. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that's beautiful about science. Uh, you, they have a scientific theory, right? And what happens is they run a test over and over and over again. And when they get the same results at the end, several times, every time they do it, do it and do it and do it. And, it, and the same results. Now it's not a theory. Now it's a proven fact. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, so every single night you got to go to bed. You got to go to sleep. And scientists say that sleep is the closest state to death. So when we go to sleep, we are testifying to the death of Yahshua the Messiah when we sleep. And we got to sleep. If we don't sleep, we'll die. Now you, you sleep, you're in a death state. Guess what? You bury it in the covers. That's a death and a burial. We're talking about the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah being manifest in our lives and in, in science. You get what I mean? And But you expect to resurrect or wake up the next day, right? So you sleep, somebody come by to visit, say, well, Sheree is dead to the world, or she's dead asleep. And we use those terms lightly. We don't even know what we're saying. But we come to class, and Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua Messiah, points it out to us. Because that's testifying to me dying on the cross. So that's why you got to say, Sheree dead to the world. Or Sheree, you understand? 
So you sleep, you're in the death state. You don't hear nothing. You don't see nothing. You're not aware of anything. That's why they say that's the closest state to death is when you sleep. You're buried in the covers. And then the next day you resurrect. Either your alarm go off and wake you up or the, the bird singing wakes you up. That's a death, a burial, and resurrection by sleeping and waking up the next day. And every human being on the face of the earth, no matter what speak, uh, language they speak, no matter what the nationality is, no matter where they're living in the world, every human being must go through a death when they're asleep, bury themselves in their cover and resurrect the next day. Isn't that wonderful? Not only that, you got to eat to live, right? So when you eat, you don't want to run around here and eat live chicken. You don't <laughs> eat a live cow. No. <laughs> you get it? Something had to die in order for you to, to eat. And you eat so that you can live from a physical standpoint. Something had to die. You get what I'm saying? Somebody say, I'm a vegetarian. Well, when you plucked up the, the carrot out the ground, you cut it off from its life source, it begins to die. You understand? Or those greens or that cabbage or whatever the case may be, that fruit you plucked off the tree, be it an apple, an orange, a pear, what have you. You get what I'm saying? So it, you pluck it from its life source, it begins to die. So that, that vegetable or that meat, whatever it is, it dies in order for you to live from a natural standpoint. That's a death. Then you prepare it and you eat it. It's buried in your body. That's a death and a burial. But the nutrients in that food resurrects throughout your body. The simple sugars, the carbohydrates, and what have you, resurrect throughout your body and give you life. So that, that cow died before you had that hamburger or that steak, or that chicken died before you could have KFC. You understand what I'm talking about? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? You see? So, so it had to die, but you ate it. Now it's buried in you. That's a death and a burial. And the nutrients resurrect throughout your body, giving you life. We're talking about the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, proving that he did die on that cross. He was buried in Joseph's new tomb, but he did resurrect again the third day, according to the scriptures. Then we go out into the creation and we look at the sun. Now the S-U-N sun out here in the creation points to the S-O-N, son of Yahweh, who is Yahshua the Messiah. Every single night, that sun, it sets. And when it's setting, in principle, it's going into a death state. Then it's buried behind the horizon. But early in the morning, that sun resurrects right on time. You get what I'm saying? That's a death. That's a burial and that's a resurrection. You get it? Then it ascends at noon. You understand what I'm saying? And then it, it, it repeats itself again. You understand? So that sun out there proves to us that Yahshua did die because it set and went to a death state. It was buried behind the rise, horizon, just like Yahshua was buried in Joseph's new tomb. But the next day it resurrects. You understand me? And gives this earth plane life. You see, and none of us could live without that sun from a natural standpoint. We got to have it. You get what I'm talking about? Then you take that. So that's a death, burial, and resurrection with the sun. So now we're going to take the seasons of the year. You can give me the green chart. Uh, the seasons of the year is preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Every single year, the earth has to go down into a death. It's over there on the chart. It's right after the butterfly. And it's uh, uh, before the universe there. It's talking about the seasons of the year. So in the fall, the earth is going into a death state. The leaves fall off the tree. The grass becomes brown. Everything looks like it's dead. You know what I'm saying? So in the fall, it goes into a death. In the winter time, it's buried. And you can see it very easily up north. The earth plane is buried in a sheet of ice and a blanket of snow. Don't it sound familiar? When you went to bed, then you bury yourself in sheets and blankets. Hello. You get what I'm saying? Y'all, we don't miss. He make it just as simple as it could be. Mm -hmm. So the earth goes into a death state in the fall. It's buried in the snow and ice. And down here in the south, we get a lot of rain, you know, in, in the winter, which is a barrier also. Mm -hmm. But then in the springtime, the sun warms Mother Earth and the snow and ice melts away from the face of the earth. 
And then that grass that was brown is green now. That, that tree that was naked and looked dead, now green leaves are coming back on that tree. You understand? So it's going into a resurrection in the springtime. And then in the summertime, it goes into a fruition, which correlates with the ascension of Yahshua the Messiah. You get what I'm talking about? So you got a death in the fall, a burial in the winter, a resurrection in the spring, and an ascension or fruition in the summertime, proving that Yahshua did die, he was buried, and he resurrected again the third day, according to the scriptures. After he tear it for 40 days, what did he do? He ascended unto his father. You get what I'm saying? Oh, it's beautiful, y'all. All right. So that's the seasons of the year. So we see the death, burial, and resurrection in how we sleep. The death, burial, and resurrection in how we eat. A death, burial, resurrection with the seasons of the year. You get what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Everything is testifying to the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So it doesn't matter who is marking you, who want to call you a fool, who want to say you stupid and you know, lost your mind. Whatever the case may be, you listen here. You hold on to the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, cause I, well, I know when I go to bed, I'm pro, I, I'm preaching the gospel. When I eat my meal, I'm preaching the gospel. When we go through the seasons of the year, it's preaching the gospel. You understand what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. wonderful. It's wonderful. So now look at this baby here. See that baby? Now mm -hmm. remember the previous speaker. Um, had it read over there about the witnesses in the earth being the blood. I mean, being the spirit is coming down. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Mm -hmm. All right. So now when that baby get ready to come forth, see that when, when that mama got pregnant, right? And conception take place and that baby is, is just stating it within her womb. See, it says 40 weeks there. 40 weeks is equal to uh, nine months. And then you also have manifest their 10 lunar months, okay? But the point of it is, it's just stating there and growing for 40 weeks, you see? And then when it's time for that baby to be born, mama gets a sign. You know, she get a show, they call it. She get a show. And she got a, 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 a blood it, it's manifest there. So, ooh. And, and the mucus plug sometimes drops from the mommy. You understand? And, and blood. So you get the mucus blood and the blood there. So you got the manifestation of blood. Then the next thing, you know, sometimes before she can get to the hospital, sometimes the water bag break for mama even get to the hospital. Say, oh my goodness. So you got a show of blood and you got the water bag break. See the blood in the water. You understand? And then after much labor and, and a lot of work for, for mommy, that big head baby come forth and he or she takes his first breath right? And that breathing is typical of the Holy Spirit, okay? But don't, don't, uh, but don't forget that baby inside that womb, he or she has a soul. You know it's alive because it's kicking and moving and carrying on inside. You know what I'm saying? So there's life right at, right at conception. You understand what I'm saying? So you got a show of blood, the water bag got to break. You understand? That baby takes its first breath and begin to breathe on its own. That's Blood, water, spirit, and he been in there for 40 weeks. That's your blood, water, spirit, and your 40. You get what I'm talking about? It is wonderful and it is beautiful. So then when you go to the uh, tabernacle chart, let's go to the tabernacle chart. Tabernacle man. Yes. Okay. So now look at this. This is awesome. You see in that tabernacle, on that altar of sacrifice, it has four horns on there. And the priest had to put the blood of the sacrifice on the four horns of that altar every single day. That's your blood. And the, the, the sacrifice, before they put it on that altar, they had to wash it in that labor. See the blood and the water? You got water in the labor. That's blood and water. And the priest, before they went into their ministry, whether it's a low priest or a high priest, he had to be anointed with the uh, oil that was in the cup of anointing oil. So you got the blood on the altar of sacrifice. You got the water in the labor. And you got the oil representing the Holy Spirit or, or quickening there with the spirit. You get it? And then when he goes into that, that, that holy place there, um, 
uh, it's 40 steps in principle in, in there, but I also like to use, it's a little easier to see that they built, it took them 40 weeks to build the tabernacle. So you got blood, water, spirit, and 40. So now let's come over there to you. See, now every time you eat, guess what happened? You got four points of blood that appear down there in your large intestines. Just like correlating with the four points of blood that the priest had to put on the uh, altar of sacrifice, on the horns of that altar, four points of blood on the altar, and in your body, four points of blood got to appear. You got an ascending, transverse, a descending, and a sigma colon. That's four points of blood in you, right? So now you go up, you see your kidneys there. They're not in your body like this together. They are separated in the body, in, in, in your back area. You understand? On one on either side. But we got it, the, the founder drew it together and put that bladder under there. Cause you see the configuration of the kidneys drawn together and the bladder as the foot, it looks similar to that labor there. Mm -hmm. So what's in the Bible is in you. You get what I'm saying? You see? So you got the blood manifest on the four uh, 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 arteries there um, in, in your large intestines. Now you got the principal water there. Your kidneys clean your blood. And then uh, uh, the waste from that drops into the bladder. And you know, a lot of times the doctors give you a cup. So you got to go in, in, the, in the restroom now. I need to get some water from you. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So your urine, that's like into the water. So you got the blood in the colon and water there, you see. And on top of the kidneys, you have adrenaline glands. And, and it's documented. That some women, you understand, the husband's working on a car or whatever, and the car fall on the husband, and he screams, and the wife run out there and lift the whole head of the car for her man. You understand? Oh, you ain't dying today, husband. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, normally, she couldn't lift that car. But that adrenaline shoot in her body, she could lift that car. You understand what I'm talking about? So we're talking about blood, water, spirit. That's the quickening there. You get what I'm talking about? It's wonderful. You see, and, and then you took uh, the blood, water, spirit, and 40. You got the, uh, the 40, your guts, believe it or not, about 40 feet of gut in there. And then you also took 40 weeks to come forth. So that's blood, water, spirit, 40. Isn't that beautiful? So now you get into the holy place, uh, and we're going to wrap up here. You got the, um, the, the, the lampstand, the seven-branch lampstand, right? And it's given light to the tabernacle. There can never be any darkness in the whole place of this tabernacle. There must be light in there at all times. So they will light that, that lamp stand at three in the evening and snuffing out at nine o'clock in the morning because the sun is, is, is shining in there now. So you don't need the, the uh, lamp stand to be lit no more. But never, no darkness in there. So now when you go to the physical body, you got the arch a order. And there's seven branches coming off that arch a order in your body. Mm -hmm. Seven branch uh, uh, lampstand in the holy place of the tabernacle and in your holy place, so in your chest, right? You got an a arch a order and seven branches coming off there. And guess what's, what's being pumped through there? It's oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. <laughs> in other words, uh, that blood got air in it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that's your pure blood. Now it got air in it. And it's circulating throughout the body. It, it, get, it feeds the heart first because the heart is constantly pumping that blood to nourish your body, to give it oxygen and to give it food. So it gets fed first, the, the air or the oxygen. There it is. That's the word. And then, and then it, it pumps it throughout the rest of the body. So you see the arch A order and then the, the heart there. Now that heart, they call it the, the, the four chambers of the heart. And then in Gray's Anatomy, it says the tables of your heart. Now look in the holy place of the tabernacle. You see that table in the holy place of the tabernacle? And guess what's on it? There are 12 uh, 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 loaves of bread on that table. Guess what? In your uh, average man, you got 12 pints of blood being pumped throughout your body with, uh, uh, from this heart. You understand? You got four corners on that table and you got four chambers to the heart. You got a golden crown around that table in that holy place 
You got a Quranic artery around your heart. You look up Quranic, it means crown. You see how beautiful that is? See, so what's in the Bible is in you. Then you got your uh, 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 altar of incense. Without That's looking four, in it. Five minutes, thank you. Just four oh, and you. burn on that tabernacle. I mean, that altar of incense. And in your lungs, you breathe four ingredients. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and nitrogen. In the tabernacle, it's frankincense, myrrh, altar, and stature. Am I saying it right? Four ingredients in the tabernacle, you breathe four ingredients. Oh, my, it's beautiful. In that altar of incense, you got a crown that says, Holiness unto Yahweh. In your lungs, you're breathing, Yahweh. You breathe in, that's Yah. You breathe out, that's way. Listen. Your very breath of life is the name of Yahweh. You get what I'm saying? So now, in the last uh, five minutes, that altar uh, uh, in the most holy place is the Ark of the Covenant, I mean. It's a three-in-one configuration in there. You got uh, uh, two angels attached to uh, the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant, right? That is the three-in-one uh, piece of furniture. You got Gabriel manifest with one angel, Michael the other angel, and then you got the Ark of the Covenant. It's attached, those two angels are attached to that Ark, like a chest there. That's a three-in-one configuration in the most holy place of that tabernacle. And in your head, your brain, it's threefold. You got a forebrain, a midbrain, and a hinder brain. Three parts of the brain, but one brain. You are a head cavity, a chest cavity, a dominant cavity. Three parts of the physical body, one body. Proven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. You take your arms. You got the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand. Three parts of the arm. But it's one arm proving the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. The previous speaker was talking about the unity of the Spirit. You take your leg, you got a thigh, you got a calf, you got a foot. Three parts to that leg, but it's one leg proving the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Isn't it beautiful? So you just keep coming to class. You understand? And keep you going there and you read Exodus and keep coming to class. And then the speakers are going to those things that we read about there. This tabernacle is back there in Exodus. You understand what I'm talking about? And there's many, many chapters in, 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 in Exodus dealing with this tabernacle. And here we are, your physical body. When you look up tabernacle, it says, especially the human body. So we are a walking tabernacle on this earth. And by the way, the earth that we walk around on is a cross, a mantle, and a core. There's three parts to this earth, but it's only one earth, proving the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Isn't that beautiful? You get what I'm talking about? When you go to the beach, you know we love to go to the beach. You're standing on the land. You look up, you see the water. That's the ocean or the sea. You keep looking up, that's the atmosphere. This entire creation, that's all it is, is land, water, and atmosphere. That's three yet one in this creation. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So you just keep right on being crazy, and you keep right on being done lost your mind. Yeah, we want to lose our mind in Yahshua the Messiah, because mm -hmm. it says in the scripture, let this mind be in you that was also in Yahshua the Messiah. But more correctly, let this Holy Spirit be in you, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. So you hold your head up and you be proud. Because you are a Yahshua walking around here with the pure truth, the unadulterated true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, which is salvation unto our souls. So I hope you got something out of that. I enjoyed class immensely. And I'm so thankful and grateful that Yahweh snatched me out of the church and set me down in school and gave me the unadulterated truth. I'm so happy. I don't know what to do. You get it? And it's rough down here now. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, on the news, ain't, ain't hardly ever no good news. Mm -hmm. You understand? But these things that we see on the news and that the world is going through mm -hmm. right now, this pandemic and everything, that's Matthew's the 24th chapter. Joshua told the, the, the disciples about this time that we live in. It. You understand? It's in there, Matthew's 24th chapter. Get in there and read it. You're going to read about pestilence. 
And that's COVID and all these other diseases and things going on. You see, he talks about earthquakes in diverse places like Haiti and what have you. You understand what I'm saying? It was somewhere else uh, uh, not too long ago, it was earthquakes. You understand? Yahshua warned us about these things, you know, in the scriptures and through the founder. You understand? So we got the absolute truth and don't you ever doubt it. Don't let the devil fool you that you ain't got the truth because you do and it's salvation to our souls. So all praises and all glory going to Yahweh our Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 That was beautiful. That, yep. that, that concludes our, um, our um, uh, this evening. Um, we hold classes here on Zoom every Wednesday from 7 to 9, and we have our in-person class on Sunday from 11 to 1 um, on Sheldon, 6615 Sheldon Road in Tampa. Um, so with that, let's be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.